Welcome to Bonita's Kitchen and thank you for joining us. What I'm going to be making today is a wild plum jelly. Earlier in the fall we took a road trip to Pools Cove, Newfoundland and we stumbled up on these wild plums and they were everywhere. So what we did is pick some to make this jelly today. But what I also got to show you is our road trip. So join me in Pools Cove, Newfoundland where we pick some delicious wild plums. I'm just here at a farmer's market outside of Gambo and just look at this delicious cabbage here. Oh, wonderful. Hi, I'm Bonnie Deria from Bonita's Kitchen. Welcome to Pools Cove, Newfoundland, here on the south coast of Newfoundland. We're here visiting, we're going to do a little tour of this community, this beautiful scenery community. And I'm open to, to bring something back to my kitchen. I'm thinking plums, it could be berries, I'm not certain, but whatever it is, I'm going to keep you in tune. So just join us as we visit Pools Cove. Rosies too, soups and stews to name a few. Moose, beef, Irish pea, oh huh, that's odd. Beer better caught. Feed a jigs, bread's so made, blueberry duff, and apple bake. Are you ready for this jelly? Don't forget pork bank belly! Join us by the sea. A journey in culinary. Always an open door. The need is kitchen to yours. The need is kitchen to yours. The need is kitchen. We're here in Pools Cove in Newfoundland and I'm just about to pick some some plums and I'm going to take it back to Bonita's kitchen and make some plum jelly. And here in my friend's garden in Pools Cove, they got at least two, maybe three big trees of with plums on it. So I'm excited to bring these back to Bonita's kitchen and we're going to make some plum jelly. <laughs> Now, wasn't that a beautiful community? All of the scenic views, we couldn't get enough of Pools Cove and I thought it would be wonderful to show you a few clips of that beautiful quaint community. So what we did here is brought home the plums, the wild plums, and we washed them and we just stored them in a cool place. But today we're gonna to be making the wild plum jelly and I got four cups of the plums and what I'm going to do is put them into my boiler and start making this delicious jelly. Okay, so let's toss them on into our boiler. So toss them on in. So that's four cups of the wild plums. As you can see there, they're not pitted. I got them put in there all because what we're making is a jelly today, not a jam. So what we're going to do is boil these down and uh, we're going to strain off the, I guess the outer parts and the stones. I'll tell you that as we go. And we're going to pour in water just to cover the top of the plums. So you see there, I'm not going to give you a ratio because whatever amount of plums you got, that's how you're going to cover them like that with some water. So just a quick recap. After you've picked your wild plums, you're going to wash them. You're going to take the stems off, any leaves or dirt that's around them. And then you're going to put them into your boiler. You can measure off what you want to use or you can just toss them into your boiler. Cover it with water just the, over the very top. 
then you're going to put it on a medium to high heat and let it start boiling until it starts to take all that juice out of there you don't need to pit them you can pit them if you want to I'll show you what that stage looks like when it starts so when your little wild plums start to boil they'll they'll start to break down like this you'll see the skin coming off it and you'll see the inner layer you'll also see as it starts to boil a little bit more that breaking away and the stones coming out now these little wild plums actually looks looks like little tiny uh, cherries but they're not cherries as you can see um, they're pretty much similar so we're going to let them boil now and I'll show you the next stage they start to break away from the stone okay as you can see um, it's starting to boil nice there now so while it's boiling stir and just squeeze the juice out of each one of those plums you don't need to mash it you got stones in there so you just press it against the side of your boiler and they pop and you can just continue on stirring it until all of them are condensed Okay, so I don't necessarily mean condensed as in all uh, evaporated or anything, but just all broke down and each one of them, all of the juices is squeezed out of them. So after you get to that stage, what we're going to do then is pour this out into a strainer with a cheesecloth. And what you can do while you're waiting for that, um, get your bottles sterilized and ready for the last stage that all could be done in advance okay so now i'm going to strain this through the cheesecloth so this is coming along nice here now and and like i was saying before um it doesn't matter how many plums you're using just as long as you've got the right consistency of water and the plums letting it boil it could be anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes it could even be longer you just want to break down those plums and get all the juices out of them you don't need to pit them so what i'm going to do now i got a cheese cloth here that's layered maybe four times and my strainer with a bowl i'm going to pour the juice out into this carefully and then we're going to measure off our juice so when i say carefully pour it because this is scalding up juice here now as you can see you can see the plums there i still got some of them that's not broke down but i'll squeeze that through so you're just going to put this in there because we want to measure off our juice now when you're making any jellies uh doesn't matter what berry or fruit you're using it's a ratio of juice and sugar we can change that because that's been since the beginning of time so after all of this strains through we'll measure that so just pouring the remainder out into that now i'm going to put the baller back over on my damper and i'm just going to let this sieve down into the bowl in under now if you find that it's it's getting too full you could uh, always get another bowl but pretty much that's all we're doing here now until it all drains through this smells amazing to you guys like that it and it's a sour type of um, fruit and uh, and you can infuse this with other uh, flavors today i'm going to be infusing it with a little bit of lemon to have that citrus balance in there and as you can see the juices is going down there nice we don't want none of the casing or uh, the stones or even the I guess the fruit that was in the middle we're just making sure we're going to get all the juice and the pectin down into that bowl now if you're in no rush to make these you can just let it strain and it'll eventually strain on its own but because I want to show you all the steps and we want to do it all in one segment I want to just kind of work it through not pushing it because I don't want any of that meat I'm saying meat, you know what I mean. 
stones and the casings. But talking a little bit about Pools Cove, what a quaint, beautiful little community. Everyone is so friendly. We were driving around looking for those wild plum trees and everyone was helping. Like we bought back two gallons or more of these plums. So I'm making plum everything for, uh, for us for sure, but I thought this would be nice, the jelly. So this is all we need now. What we're going to do is measure off our juice and see how much we got. So what I'm going to do now is pour off and see how much juice I got. I'm going to use the same baller with a thick bottom because that is perfect for making any jellies because you, um, you need that ball, that full rolling boil. Okay, so let's pour this out. Okay, so I'm going to measure out two cups first. I want to make the, the exact amount of measurements before we know how much sugar. So that's two cups there. I'm going to pour it into the boiler. Pour this I'm going to start the boil on this while I'm measuring because um, again we're going to have it on a medium to a high heat because we want to get that boiling before we add the sugar. And then after when we add the sugar, then that's when all of the, the fanciness come in. So that's four cups. So we have four cups of um, berries. And right now with the water that we added and the juice that came from the berries, we still got four cups. And we see what this is now. It's probably just a little bit. So uh, it's not even half. It's like a quarter of a cup or something. So right now we're going to go four cups and a little bit. All right, so let's get that boiling. So starting your boiler on a medium to high heat again, and getting that boiling started. We're gonna be measuring off four cups and a quarter of sugar because we got four cups and a little bit, which was about a quarter of a cup of juice. And that's the consistency. I can change that because jellies, jams, is all about the sugar content. So what I'm going to do now is uh, measure that up and put that in there. And then we're gonna get that jelly boiling. Okay, so we're gonna pour that directly on in. So that's one cup. I'll just continue on doing this. And also, after I put in the sugar, I'm gonna be putting in a teaspoonful of lemon juice. And I'm gonna be using fresh juice uh, from a squeezed lemon. So that's three, one more, and a quarter. Okay, so that's all poured in. We gotta get our lemon. I'm just gonna eyeball to do a teaspoonful in there. And that'll give us that citrus blend. Um, this jelly is absolutely delicious. I got some already made that I'm going to be showing you, but we will follow through this episode to show you how it goes to this consistency to make a jelly. So what you're going to do after you stir in all of that sugar and your juice from the lemon, you're going to start it up boiling first get it the bubble, and then you're gonna put your timer on anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes, and then we're gonna do a test to see if it's ready to go. So after you, you start the boil on your juice, as the foam starts to accumulate on the top of the juice, scoop it off and discard it. Keep doing this until it stops. Like previous videos, you need to babysit your juice because you don't want it to bubble over. And what I mean by that, when it starts to rapid boil, it'll start to rise and you don't want that to happen. So stay there, stirring occasionally, scooping the foam off and putting your timer on when it starts to boil. 20 minutes. So as it's boiling, you're going to remove the foam like this. Again, um, have your bottles sterilized. I do have a link up on Bonita's Kitchen showing you how to sterilize and seal your jars. So we won't be doing it on this episode, but um, I got mine already done 
waiting for this delicious wild plum jelly. So as you can see, your timer should be on and you should be releasing all of that foam and stirring it occasionally and getting it to the consistency. Okay, as you can see, mine is at a rapid boil there now and it's got all these nice little bubbles. What we're going to do is do a little test. Mine is very close to its time. I got a bowl in the fridge and then I'm going to do the spoon check and put a little bit of the jelly in, or the juice right now, in the bowl. I always call it babysitting your, your pot, but I'm sure you may call it another another thing and this is basically to make sure that you're scooping all of the foam away from the jelly and then you're stirring it occasionally and then putting it on a timer so I'm going to do a little test here now and then basically it's a cold bowl you put your your spoon in there you let it you just take a little bit of the juice and put into the bowl and then I'm going to let it sit for a moment and what I'm going to do then is just put my finger in the middle of it. If it don't go together right away you can see that it's at that stage where it won't, it will gel together when it's in a bowl. So now we'll go to the next step. Okay I enjoy when I'm at this stage because I know I'm getting ready to bottle my jelly. So pretty much you'd know when that time is up, your 20 minutes, um, if you're still scooping foam from the sides of your, your juice, let it go a little bit longer because that's getting it ready. That's condensing that water base and making it into a jelly substance. So now mine is ready. We're gonna scoop it into my already um, sterilized jars. My lids are still on the boiler and we're going to scoop that in there and then I'm going to show you what it looks like because I got a batch already made. I'm excited to get going with this. Okay, so pretty much what we're going to do now is take nice uh, scoops of the juice and pour into our bottles that is already sterilized, ready to be filled up. So pretty much all you're going to do is put equal amount in each one leaving about a half an inch to an inch from the top of your bottle. Then we'll get our lids and, and seal those up, but I'll clean around the rims first. So that's what I'm doing here now. Looks absolutely delicious and smells amazing. Just look how beautiful they look in the bottles. So all you're doing there now is cleaning around the rims, putting your sterilized lids on the top. This is piping hot air now so I'm going to I'm going to tighten them a little bit more now in a second. So I'm going to do that with all of my jars leaving about half an inch to an inch from the top of the bottle and then I'll show you what this jelly looks like already set. So that's pretty much all you need to do to make your wild plum jelly. So I got mine over there in the jars and I'm going to get my, uh, my boiler going to get them sealed. But right now I want to show you what they already look like uh, when they're in the gel form. And I was just noticing there on my ladle that the gel is, is starting to gel inside there and I was just going to pour this over the top of uh, the cream cheese there just to show you what that looks like as well. It's just starting to gel there into my scoop um, already and it's not even cool. Now this one I done yesterday and I'm going to show you. I'm going to pop it and put a little bit, just look at the texture of this jelly. I'm going to take up a nice little scoop. Just look at this, how delicious it is. And it's still got a little bit of a sour tartness to it, but with the sugar and the lemon base, it brings it, oh, it brings it on for sure. I got some of my homemade 
um, bread there. Just gonna put a little bit on the side, and I'm gonna have a little taste now and have some tea with it. Just wanna put a little bit of this cream cheese on my bread. Now, of course, we're not doing a cream cheese video. We're doing the jelly, but I wanted to put that on there just to have a little taste with it and look of it on the bread. Isn't that lovely? And it spreads so nice. And this again is the homemade white bread that's on Vanita's kitchen. I'm gonna have a little taste. Mm. I can see this on my toast in the morning. The, the, the delicious taste of tartness of the plums. And you can just, it's not too sweet. The tartness really cuts that down. Delicious. And another little taste of my tea. Now this is as good as it gets. I know I've said it on many videos and when I've made different meals and jellies and jams, but this wild plum jelly, two thumbs up by Bonita's Kitchen. And while I was in Pools Cove, I was talking to some of the people and they were telling me how delicious this jelly was. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'll just take it back and make it. Of course, I did get a sample of it while I was there and I was so excited to bring it here today to show all of you. And if you can get access to the wild plums, and who knows, you could probably do it with the store-bought plums. I'm sure it'll taste just as good. But this here, you need to try. And if you enjoyed this video today of wild plum jelly, we got the recipe down under this video and the subscribe button here on YouTube. And if you want to see more of our videos, just hit the link. It'll prompt you to what you need to do. You can also visit me on my Facebook page or on www.bonitaskitchen.com. Send us a message on either one of those links. We would love to hear from you. And if you liked our video for wild plum jelly today, don't forget to share it with your family and friends. I'm sure they would love to see it. So thank you to all of you that have subscribed and are new subscribers to come. From our kitchen to yours, you have a wonderful day. Join us by the sea, a journey in culinary, always an open door. Kitchen to yours, Benita's Kitchen.